Hey friends, it's Jessie. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my March Pan Those Eyeshadows update. This is the second update of the year. I am so excited to share the progress. We have three rollouts today. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Before we jump too far into the update, I just have to take a moment to share the dress. Look how cute this dress is. It's a little baby doll dress from Bohm. It is such a cute dress. I bought it around Christmas time from Bohm and honestly, I'm obsessed. I think it is just super cute. And because we're heading into March, which I feel like is a time that I like to wear a lot of green eyeshadow, I wanted to do more of like a green makeup look and outfit today. So like I said, we do have three rollouts today. I do have one bonus pan. Before I dive into the shades, I thought I would share my numbers really quick. So as of the time I'm filming this, I currently have 40 pans. That is eyeshadows that are not finished yet. All of my completed eyeshadows that are completely empty have been removed from my spreadsheet. So I do currently have 40 pans and a pan percentage of 1.29%, which I think is pretty good. I feel like I keep going up and up and up and I think that's very exciting. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with my bonus pan, which comes from my ABH Modern Renaissance. I'm unofficially trying to pan this palette as well as the Soft Glam. And when I say unofficially, I mean I'm not really rolling in a ton of shades, but I am trying to hit pan on as many shades as possible. But I did hit a bonus pan in Primavera, which is this gold down at the bottom. And I feel like it's just made a really pretty inner corner highlight. I've been wearing a ton of warmer neutral looks as you will see from some of these shades in the project but I feel like I've used this primarily as like an inner corner highlight or even just right on the inner part of my lid. So that is Primavera, the fourth pan I have in the Modern Renaissance palette. Not a crazy huge pan, but if you keep up with the updates, you will see that I've definitely made a lot of progress on Golden Ochre up at the top as well getting a lot of love out of this palette. Now we can go ahead and start with the rolled in shade. So the first shade we've been working on, it comes from my Too Faced Natural Lust palette. The shade I've been working on out of this palette is Set in Stone, which is this matte brown right here in the middle row. And as you can tell, I've made quite a bit of progress on this shade. I've used it 19 times this month for a grand total of 34 uses in the project. I'm not sure how deep these pans are in comparison to my normal Too Faced tin palettes, but I do feel like I could have pan pretty quickly, hopefully by next update. I am going to keep it in the project because I do feel like I have made a ton of progress on it. And it is a shade I've had quite an easy time working into looks. Like I said, I've been wearing a ton of warm neutral looks this month, as you will see from all the look photos I am going to include. But I would say 34 uses on this shade is not bad. I think I could have pan maybe around like the 40 to 45 use mark. I feel like 50 might be a bit much, but I definitely think like 40 to 45 I could have pan. So another six to 10 uses or so, I feel like I could see pan at the bottom of this shade. The next shade I've been working on, it comes from my J Star Thirsty palette. And of all the Jeffree Star palettes I own, this is probably towards the lower half in terms of favorites. I feel like the formula in this is just not as easy to work with as some of his more recent palettes. But the shade we've been working on is Lick, which is this bronzy gold shimmer right in the center of the palette. I used Lick four times this month for a grand total of seven uses in the project. And if I angle it just right, you can see that there is pan in that shade. I feel like seven uses is extremely good for a Jeffree Star shade because they are very deep. I feel like my saving grace with this shade was the fact that it is more of a dry formula. I did have somebody comment on my last update when I mentioned I was having issues with it being a little dry or patchy. I'm so sorry, I can't remember your name. I should have looked it up before I started filming, but this person did recommend I use a glitter glue instead of setting spray. And honestly, that was a game changer. My remaining four uses was in fact used with a glitter glue. And I did dig my brush pretty deep in there to get a lot of product. The glitter glue did help to keep the pigment on my eyes but I still felt like it took a little bit of building up to get the opacity I wanted. I use this primarily as a lid shade, and honestly, I'm still shocked that it only took seven uses for this because I really thought this was gonna be a shade I was gonna hit my 20 use threshold and then roll out. Using Lick has definitely inspired me to wanna to use more of the silver and these brown shimmers as well, but in terms of project, I'm very happy to have this out of my project for now and work on something different. So that is our first rollout. The next shade I have, I have in my singles palette. This is 
is just an empty ColourPop Z palette that I put on um, shades I'm working on in. And the shade I'm going to talk about is Sweetie, which is this matte creamy pink shade. It's like a cream with a hint of peach. And this is from the ColourPop Melt For You palette. If you missed last update, I did have a casualty in that palette and I have not repressed that shade yet. So I did pull this one out and just plop it in my singles palette until then. I only used Sweetie one time since last update for a grand total of four uses in the project. And as you can see, we don't really have a lot of progress. I feel like the reason I have been slacking on this one is because I forgot I put it in a singles palette and my singles palette is in the bottom of my everyday makeup drawer. So I'm definitely going to have to pull this one out and move it towards the top so it's a little bit more within eyesight and I am more enticed to use it. But I use Sweetie primarily as like a transition shade. I put it down with a neutral look. I feel like this would make a good lid setting shade, so I definitely wanna try that in the next month, using this on top of my eye primer before I go into neutrals, or even before I go into like pink or orange looks. Spring is definitely a time I like to play with those bright colors a little bit more. But so far, we only have four uses and it will be staying in the project. The next shade I have to talk about comes from my Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. And the shade that I rolled in was Caramelized, which is this brown shimmer at the bottom. I used Caramelized 10 times this month for a grand total of 21 uses in the project. And I used this primarily as an eyeliner. I would take an angled liner brush and do a faux wing with it or smudge it on my lower lash line. A couple times I did combine it with some of these shimmers. I think I combined it with maybe Lick once or twice. I put a lighter shimmer in the first half of my lid and then just pop caramelized right on the outer part of my eyelid as well, just to blend it and give it a little bit more dimension. In general, brown shimmers are not really my thing. If it wasn't obvious by all of my videos, I feel like I prefer a little bit more colorful makeup, but I do like this project because it does help me use more things in my collection. I feel like the shade does not look very different. You can definitely tell it's been used, but because I don't feel like I have a significant dip and it will take me a really long time to hit pan on this, I have met my 20 use threshold, so I don't feel bad about rolling this one out today. I am going to roll it out of the project, but because we have not hit pan, as always, it is still eligible to be rolled in. And who knows, we might roll it in again in the next couple months. A lot of times with shades like this in my project where I have met my 20 use threshold and have chosen to roll it out rather than sticking it out and hitting pan, I do tend to take a break, but then coming back and unofficially working on it. And it might pop up as a bonus pan by the end of the year. But 21 uses on this shade, I am pretty proud of that. I am ready to call it a day on this palette and move on to another shade. And I'm really having my fingers crossed for something a little bit more colorful this month. The next shade I have also also is in my ColourPop Singles palette and the shade is Run and Gun. This is from the Dallas Mavericks in ColourPop palette, I believe. And I did not use this a single time this month. Like I said, I completely forgot about my singles palette. That is definitely on me. I do like to use this shade in conjunction with more cool tone neutrals and I feel like now that I'm slowly working through some of those warm tone neutral shades in my collection and in my projects that I will be able to use some more cool tone makeup in the next month. And last but not least, the hand selected shade I had picked for myself this month did come from my ABH Soft Glam. And the shade we picked was Cypress Umber right here at the bottom. Just this really deep, dark brown. It's like a dark chocolatey brown. In case you could not tell, I have hit pan. I used Cypress Umber 17 times over the past month and I believe it did not take me 17 uses to hit pan. Let me pull up my notebook. According to my notebook, it only took 15 uses to hit pan, so I did use it an additional two times, and I did use it on very tapered blending brushes, like this one from Morphe, the M506, so that is why my pan is so tiny and circular. It's so cute. It's like a perfect little circle in there. This is my third pan in the ABH Soft Glam palette. This is definitely my favorite warm tone neutral palette in my entire collection. It's an oldie but a goodie, and and I'm very happy that it's starting to look more loved. And I was also able to get a lot of use out of Tempura as well and expand that pan that we had, I believe, from last year. As a whole, I use Cypress Umber as a very outer corner deepening up shade with warm tone neutral looks. And for someone that does not wear a lot of neutrals, typically I felt like I was wearing a lot of neutral looks over the past month. 
but I feel like there's a time and a place. I enjoyed it. I really liked working on this shade and there are other shades in this palette I definitely am hoping to work on in the future. So here are the three shades that are staying in the project this month. We have Set in Stone from the Too Faced Natural Lust, Sweetie from the ColourPop Melt For You, and Run and Gun from ColourPop and Dallas Mavericks. So we have two randomly generated shades to roll in and my hand selected shade. I already have an idea of what I wanna work on for my hand picked shade, but we're gonna go ahead and randomize a couple numbers. I did actually take the liberty to download the Tiny Decisions app and put all of my palettes in. It literally took me like two hours because my palettes are everywhere in my makeup room. And then I realized I put it on the wrong phone. I normally film on my main phone, but I do have my older phone that I used to film on, but now I just use it as like an iPod and I keep various apps I like on there. I meant to download Tiny Decisions on that phone and I did not do that. So we are going to be doing it the old fashioned way with Google random number generator. So let's go ahead and just generate some shades. So the first number is, what is that? 901 and the second number is 2619. So let me go ahead and pull out those palettes and shades and then we'll meet back here in just a second. All right, friends, I went and grabbed those palettes and I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a slightly more colorful color story this time around. So the first shade we drew comes from my ColourPop and Powerpuff Girls palette. I did review this when it came out and this is still one of my favorite colorful ColourPop palettes. I think it's just so fun. But the shade we rolled in is Pokey Oaks. I'm not sure what you would describe this color as. It's more of like a corally peach type color. It's very pretty. I feel like I could definitely work this in with the brown and even sweetie I think those two would go great together the second shade I rolled in comes from my body bean and shroud hollow bean palette when I did my ranking of all the palettes I tried last year this I'm pretty sure ranked in like the top five like this is one of my favorite palettes in my collection I think the color story is so unique and so fun I love all the colors in here but enough of me rambling, the shade we rolled in is Woodsboro, which is this orange shimmer shade. And can I just say, I'm very excited to play with this one. It's been a long time since I've worked on an orange. I did pan an orange shimmer either last year or a couple years ago, and I loved it. I think it's so fun. And I do feel like the orange would also go really good with Pokey Oaks. And last but not least, the shade I've decided to roll in for myself to work on is from my ColourPop Hocus Pocus 2 palette. Y'all are gonna to think I'm freaking crazy because the shade I want to roll in is Cursed, which is this lime green matte up at the top. I know what you're thinking. That does not go with my color story, but hear me out. I really want to work on a green for March. I'm actually using that shade Cursed today just to blend out the very edges of my green. Other than that, I use my Beauty Bay Dark Fantasy palette. It's beautiful. I'd like to work on that one too eventually this year, but I feel like Cursed would be so fun to work on for March. I just love doing green makeup and I feel like March is the perfect time to do that with all the St. Patrick's looks and we're starting to get into spring. And honestly, Cursed does pull a little bit yellow. So I could maybe even get away with using it as like an inner corner highlight and using the orange shade on the lid. There's a lot of different things I feel like I could do and I feel like it would be a fun challenge and I'm just excited to have more colorful colors in my color story. It's been a long time coming. I've been working on so many warm tone neutrals between this and my A to Z project pan. So I'm very excited to finally have some colors I am a little bit more confident and comfortable with. That is all for today's update, my friends. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you did enjoy, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And as always, make sure you subscribe before you leave so you never miss out on any updates for any of my various panning projects. I hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye friends.